Well, apparently the dogs do not understand the rules of false tube. So I'm not sure how I can splice this together, but I will give it a shot. Um, so that is, we were talking about, that's Rovaris. You saw the skeletons. It's really cute. It's a quick, it's a quick stitch and it will get finished this year. Um, so, and this bag my mom made. So cute. I think this was the first time she did it with um, like a charm pack. So anyways, okay. So haul, let me swap everything back over. It was nice that everybody um, enjoyed my daughter and the puppies, the play date. Um, so it was really nice to see all the, all the fun comments. Um, she got a kick out of it, I think, and I know we'll, we'll do it again. Um, and I just, uh, I, I think it was just a, <laughs> a funny time. It was definitely different with two people. I can see how it's got pros and cons. Um, so anyhow, but thank you. Thank you for the love on that one. Okay, so Paul, I got, I picked up my other two patterns from Expo. The first one is by Jeanette Douglas. Home is where the heart is. I feel like it doesn't show you everything, but it's, I know it's not a big stitch and that's kind of why, there we go, is that better? I think I've got my light going in the wrong direction. But I'm excited to stitch this one because I believe in that. Okay, now this is my dog. Okay, this is not gonna go well. Okay, this is Ginger. Mm -hmm. She's a kisser, um, a lover. She's a little hyper. Uh, she doesn't have a lot of manners, thank you. Okay, the other one I got is Fox and Rabbit. There. And this is Rebecca Aldridge, 1816. Now, I'm not gonna lie, it's, different than what I would normally pick. That bird I really like, but it's the gray. It's everything on the linen. Um, and I do not have an Adam and Eve sampler, so that's kind of cool, something new. Um, it says, commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. Yeah. Um, those are the things that when you read them, not everything else in the sampler has to be has to be perfect. I think what you, to me, what I put on my wall is what I want to say back to the world. And when it's a message like that, that's what I fell in love with is, you know, a lot of times we hold all our stresses in and we think we're supposed to carry all our burdens ourselves, and it's just a nice reminder um, to know that we're not. Um, so loved that one and it's my first one by Fox and Rabbit so I'm, I'm excited to have that in my stash okay so then I found just walking around today um, I, and I know I have to read it because there's some one over one on this but this is by samplers not forgotten I grabbed this up at Brick City today and I don't know why it caught my eye I know the first one did because the word was faith that's what jumped out at me. But then I fell in love with the border and the pinks and all the pretty colors. So it's Faith 1831, and I did read the back. There are two cherubs at the top, and it says, and it's stitched over one, the best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. Okay, so again, one, that's, I, I love the fact that that's what it's called is faith um, because it's something that you, you can't see. You have to trust in. Um, so those are my two samplers I picked up. All right, then I had shared with you this pattern by Blackbird Designs. Mother's Honor Dew. Uh, this was one that I had found watching Miss Flossie. And um, I thought that this would be something that I'd like to, to do quickly. I told you it would not be later. I wanted to get this, this done and it's not a huge stitch. So I picked up today um, 28 count and it does call for 28 count, which is right up my alley. 
um, butterscotch. So this is the color of the linen because in the picture, it's definitely more of a yellow. And it's so, it's, it's um, I'm not a yellow person. It, it doesn't look good on me, so I don't wear it for sure. But this color here is really pretty and butterscotch definitely um, describes it correctly. So I'm excited, I'm really excited for this one. Um, so then what I thought I would do is, obviously I don't have, uh, I don't have any finishes, um, but I thought since I shared the progress I had on the um, Hands Across the Sea little gem, I could share with you the two little gems that I finished in the past. So the first one I ever stitched for Hands Across the Sea was Agnes' husband. And uh, I will say I loved every stitch on this. It was absolutely so dreamy to stitch. I used the Legacy Linen. Um, I got my kit from Hoop and Frame, and I love using them. They're very quick. Their customer service is, is so good. Um, and they oftentimes have hands across the sea kits ready. You buy the pattern elsewhere, so I had my download, and then they will send you. So this was my first time I stitched with silks. Uh, and you, because you could, you only had to stitch, I think it was four colors. It was red, green, and black. So no, actually only, only three. Um, and that's really, really pretty. Really pretty colors. So, and this is 30 count. So maybe it's, it's, it's obviously could be a little bigger than what, what others are stitching on. Um, it was also, um, it was framed by Hobby Lobby. I'm very lucky that at my Hobby Lobby, I use um, two gentlemen that absolutely are incredible and their names are Nick and Mike. They're uh, just a team to be reckoned with. Um, Mike is, had owned previously his own framing shop. So when I go to him with tricky things or a question, he can, he can answer. And I trust in all my samplers and all my work that he's going to, um, it's gonna to be top notch. So, hi Ginger. Anyways, uh, I do go to Hobby Lobby and they are wonderful at listening. They've learned more about samplers than I'm pretty sure they want to, but it's important and the lines are important. And so anyways, um, I learn, I think one of the things that, it is fun to see other things than samplers. That was one of the biggest comments that I got from the episode with my daughter. Uh, it is fun. It, not everything has to be about a sampler. Uh, but I will say one of the reasons I do like stitching on samplers or working with them or having them in my stash is that I learn things. I learn things about different areas. I learn things about the time period. And this was the first time I learned, okay, you're gonna need to get down. You're gonna need to get down. You're not part of the show. No, you can say hi and that's, that's all that there is, but you need to just calm down. Nope, okay, are we done? Okay, so this was the first time I learned that if black was in the sampler, ooh, that got really funky, but if black was in the sampler, it meant that the member of the family was deceased. Those are the tidbits that I, I like. I like to be aware of that. Um, I love history. I don't think that everything in history was perfect, obviously, um, but I love history and I, I love being able to stitch about it. This is a naughty dog sometimes. Okay, stop. Okay, next one is Mary Steed. Okay, <laughs> so this is another little gem. So it was another PDF download, and I did the same thing on this one um, from Hoop and Frame. And I got the, I was able to get the silks, and again, it was just a small amount. So see if I can get it up there for you. I love the frame. Um, Sorry, I didn't mean to make my voice like that, but I really love this frame. The gold just makes it so sweet. Um, so here's the deal with this one, because if you've stitched Mary Steed, you're going to see boo-boos in this. This one, um, 
when my mom was in hospice, I needed something I could pick up and stitch an alphabet. I needed something small. I needed to know that I could finish it. Um, I had put down my model stitching because I just, I did not want to make any errors. So this was perfect. I had everything I need, linen, floss, alphabet, size, it covered everything. I did great. Um, a couple of times I mixed up colors and I know many of you understand a hospice situation, so I know you understand that your mind is in a thousand different places, but you still want your needle to move. So with Mary Steed, I made a mistake over here. Um, and the best way I can say this is, this is up here in day one of hospice. And this is, seems silly to say, but this is what we call, this is part of that stitching journey. I won't ever forget this. So I'm not angry with myself that I, I was frustrated, but I'm not angry at the mistakes. So up here was day one. This is day two. Um, this is the end. And what happened was is I got my colors mixed up here. I can tell you they're backwards. They're, they're off. Um, one should have been green instead of blue. The colors were so similar and I just wasn't thinking. Um, over here, this is not right. And then I was so off that the best I felt like I could come up with was to just not do it, not finish the flower. And so what I ended up doing was putting my mom's um, first and middle initial. Again, wasn't really thinking or I would have put her last initial. And then I added a heart. So, you know, these things are, they might remind you of a hard time um, but this is still, this is just beautiful to me because I was there with my dad and my sister and um, my mom respected the needle so much that she would have understood because for a little bit I felt a little guilty stitching without her. Um, but at the same time, I normally wouldn't have made the changes to, to anything like this because this was an antique reproduction. I would have left it exactly as is. However, there's a time for everything. And I think that's something that I've shared um, before. I mean, life is life and life has, um, life has changes in it. So it's, it's how you handle them. And uh, the best way I could handle this was to just put my memory in, this is what was going on and that is okay. Um, so those are my two hands across the sea little gems and hopefully one day soon I will get to start on a big one. Um, mine that I'd like to start is that Jane Bannister, I believe. And then soon enough, I will hopefully have my first red work piece done by them. Um, the Emily Ann. So I think that's it. And I hope I can... I hope I can splice these two together. I'm not sure. I might have to do part one and part two, and you'll have to be patient with me because I hate to start all over. Um, so I hope that you all have a wonderful Easter. I hope that you have a beautiful weekend of, um, well, my little hashtags are, you know, faith and family. Um, I hope you have that time together and I hope that you're able to sit down and stitch. And I know for me, when I'm stitching, I'm thinking, um, I'm giving thanks, I'm um, planning ahead. So happy stitching, Floss Tube. I hope that you uh, enjoyed the tour of the my local needle workshop, and I hope that you will enjoy um, the little progress I made this week. Love you, bye.